Welcome back to Every Way Woman. So most people, including myself, are terrified of making the wrong decision. I completely fear the consequences, and it's paralyzing. You know, I, <laughs> we know coming from an old lady, let me tell you, <laughs> the older you get, the harder it becomes. It doesn't get any easier no. because you run out of time. You're saying, no, you, you feel like you're running out of time? Right. Um, absolutely, I do. I just feel like you have less time to um, help correct your mistakes. So I can, I kind of get where you're coming from, but oh my gosh, you're so young. No, no, because I have less time to make mistakes. So maybe I can correct them, but if I make the mistake, how can I build off that? What do you mean when you say you have less time to make the mistake? Well, I'm already supposed to be so far ahead in my life. Okay. I'm not there. So I've got to catch up with myself. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy. And where we think it's... we should be. Mm -hmm. And now I can't make the decision because I'm so afraid <laughs> I'll make the wrong decision that won't get me to where I want to be. Uh, yeah, it's just, it, it, it's, for me, it's a crazy thing to even hear right. you say that come out of your mouth because you are so young. And I don't, I mean, I know that I've had fears in, 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 in being, when I was 28, right. but they weren't really those types of fears. They weren't so, like so looming <clears throat> over me. Um, and to make a decision, I think that's what happens. You, what's the worst thing can happen with the decision that you make? It was wrong. Maybe we use a different word. You made the, a different decision for the situation. I think how we frame it is important. Mm -hmm but you have to make a decision. And what's happening to your generation is we've planted in your mind that everything has to be like this and you have to make this right decision and you can't mess up your credit and you can't spend this money. And, and you can't. And you, and you can't, <laughs> you know, you, well, you, you can't, can't mess up your credit. But we've put all these pressures about what you can and cannot do. <clears throat> and so we don't allow you to make decisions. And then we want to be accepted. We want, yeah, I don't the want judgment anybody that to, comes with the decisions. I don't want Lauren to not like me because I didn't make the right decision. And, you know, I don't care what people think. Yeah, we do care what people yeah. think. We so care. So that's why I don't, don't want to disappoint. I think in, <clears throat> that probably relates disappoint to a lot who? of you out there. Who disappoint who? You know, I don't want to disappoint my family, friends, et cetera. I don't want to disappoint myself because when you disappoint yourself, that is a hard thing to live mm -hmm. with. Um, yeah, we can be our own worst critics. I think I'm. I think each one of us here are our own worst critics. I think that tends to be the case for most people, except for people who are egocentric. But um, putting that aside, right. um, what else is there to fear? You know, it, it, yeah. So you make a mistake and you move on. But that fear How, prevents so you. What from makes you so fearless? I mean, you you kind of alluded that you're running out of time. Mm -hmm. But in saying this, you seem so strong. Well, but when I was your age, I didn't have kids and I had a lot more freedom. I could choose to do whatever I wanted. This path, that path, one door shut, I just turned to the other one and put a smile on my yeah. face. I mean, it's a time where you could be selfish because kids you That's know, are true. lifetime commitment. It is a difference between not having responsibilities, I just wanna say kids, and having a few more responsibilities in making decisions. But for me and my husband, every decision that we make is surrounded around our family. So we have to think about it. And sometimes we don't make the best decisions. So yeah, what we, do you do when you we, go, oops, we, we I don't wasn't make the best about decisions. the family this time. And it has a, a consequence on our family. But what we have to realize is one, we made a decision and how to bounce back. Mm -hmm. right. And I think that's what happens. We focus on we made the wrong decision and we don't show how to bounce back. That's what we're working on in our home right now. We made a very difficult decision for our family mm -hmm. and it was wrong. It was clearly the wrong decision, and now we're feeling How the consequences. How are you bouncing back? But here's the thing, but I, mean, I think I hear her saying is that she's really a, a, a f afraid of failing. There's a fear of failure attached to this fear. Absolutely. Well, if you make one wrong decision, you have not failed. Oh, mm -hmm. no, but I have. But in my eyes, in, I mean, living as like a perfectionist, right? So mm -hmm. if you I've make one wrong decision, you, you, you failed. Well, I'm trying not to put <laughs> that kind of big of a title on it. But that's what you're it, saying, Jay. I, yeah, most of the time that's what I feel like. I mean, those things that I've done wrong, it's like it's hard to sleep at night sometimes. So, okay, go ahead. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, that's a big one. That's a really yeah. big one because now with that comes back down to self-value. Your self-value. Self you, your failure is a part of life. And if you don't fail, you mm -hmm. will never go to the next level. Yeah. Anybody in this world who's done anything great has well, failed. And, and, and we don't put it in the Or, or has failure. made really bad decisions. decisions. And lost Very a lot of money. No, I, just kidding. No, but, <laughs> but some of the best lessons I've learned in life have come from my mistakes, have come from essentially my failures. I will credit yeah. that 
But then there comes a place where you wonder what's next. Like you and your husband, how do you bounce back from that? Because sometimes I don't trust myself to bounce back. And of course that comes from self-worth, if so you will. So when you Absolutely. were growing up, if you did something wrong, was there a punishment that was attached to it? Not necessarily. You know, when I was growing up, I did not want to be a woman. That was, was that my mean? biggest really? fear. What does that mean? My biggest fear in life when I was a little girl was to grow up and be a woman. Because what of do you the mean? Why? What did, what did because, you of the, because of the view that I was taught about women in society and all of that. What were and you taught? It, it just, I want to go the, yeah. into it. But that was my biggest fear. Over and above everything else, I did not want to grow up and become a woman. I did not want to have boobs. I did not want to have a, a menstrual mm. cycle. I did not want to have boyfriends. I, w I was frightened to death. Well, you are to grow one up of and be in a the woman. most. Okay. Well, yeah, but I wanted to attach that to something. Yeah. Because along with that came a whole Litany. river right. of things underneath that I had to overcome. And there was a point in my life where I had to put on my mirror every day in the morning, and I had to write on that mirror, I am a woman and I love being a woman. And every time I had my menstrual cycle, I hated myself for that period, every time, because I hated being a woman. Mm -hmm. And I had, when I had my menstrual cycle, and people thought that I was crazy, and all of my friends around me and guy friends, but I would make it a point to go, okay, I'm starting my menstrual cycle, I know I hate this, but I'm gonna celebrate this. Exactly. I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna say, I am a woman today. I had my menstrual cycle. I feel good. And I would have to look at myself in the mirror and say, no matter what I saw, because what I saw I didn't like, mm -hmm. but I had to convince myself, you are a beautiful person. person. And you Thank are you a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. And I am going to love this experience. And it took me years mm -hmm. to overcome that. And I had to discipline myself and put that on the mirror every day mm -hmm. and attach what I wrote to what I saw. So about that decision in Madison, that's an amazing story. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. With myself, with my recent decision about dealing with my molestation, for years, for years, I made decisions contrary to what I knew because I never, ever wanted anybody to be able to take advantage of me the way that that person did and those individuals did. So with that being said, and it was a difficult decision. It was a really difficult decision. And I struggle with it now as I share with you. I don't want everybody in here knowing that I was molested. There's a label that goes with that. But I had to make a decision for me. Madison had to make a decision for her to say that. Irrespective of everything that's going on, Stacey, you are an amazing woman. And that's where I am today because all that other stuff was farce. I was doing things that didn't that I didn't even believe in, right? Because I was didn't want how people thought about me. So when you get to that point, Jazz, where you are true to who you are. I'm Stacy Lewis, a 48-year-old woman who was molested by men and women, and damn it, I'm new today, right? It, it's different, but you have to, and I can say that. Yeah. I couldn't say that before. Mm -hmm. That's what a decision looks like. When this lady says to herself, hey, for I grew up for years and I didn't want to be a lady, but now I'm a, and beautiful, might I add. <laughs> Stunning. Right? Stunning. So that's what, that, those are the conversations. So for you being one of us, we love you. Whatever it is, shake it, baby. Whatever it is, shake it and move forward. It'll be all right. Decide to be great. We'll be right back with more Every Way Woman. Absolutely. Stay tuned. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs>